On June 29, 2023, a powerful derecho, which also contained a tornado, hit the homestead. A tornado touched down briefly just west of Cahoka, Missouri, but a clear damage path was seen from the air all the way through Montrose, Iowa, across the river into Nauvoo, Illinois. The homestead was in the heart of the damage path, and the majority of the tall trees were either topped or uprooted. The landscape in some areas was virtually unrecognizable. Dozens of buildings were blown down in my neighborhood alone. Entire cornfields were flattened. Power lines were down everywhere, making the roads impassable, and telephone poles were snapped off like toothpicks. The power was out for three days. Here I am eating a can of cold SpaghettiOs. Luckily, thanks to my recent prepping, I have a solar generator and a gas powered generator and I made it through just fine. By the end of the day, I was exhausted, traumatized, and overwhelmed. All I could do is sit back and just look upon the destruction around me. I was caught in the storm trying to put my car in the garage, but luckily all I got was a scraped knee over the deal. My cabin was blown off of its blocks and came to rest on its corner, but luckily, structurally, it survived. All the trees around the cabin were topped or uprooted. It took about two weeks to clean the yard and another couple months to clear the roadway back to my cabin and my campsites. Some of my hiking trails are still covered with downed trees. There was a silver lining though. Through all the damage and destruction, I did not hear of a single person or animal who was hurt or killed. The following is my shaky cell phone footage of the storm and the cleanup afterwards. The sky is green. It doesn't look green on here, but it's green. It's like a turquoise green color. It just looks grayish blue on the screen. There is a tornado warning, so there's definitely been rotation spotted. Now it's going to start downpouring, so I'm not going to be able to see anything. Now I should probably put the uh, Durango away. Well, here's what we have now. My maple tree. Oh man, this is insane. It just missed the Durango. There's tree behind it, tree in front of it. 
Oh my goodness. I bet my cabin's gone. Oh man. This is not safe. So this tree branch fell when I was on the steps right there. Cut my knee up. I was going to open the garage. Oh my gosh. I can hear trees cracking. I was going to open the garage to put the Drango away. I got in the Drango, got it started, and I was like, this is getting too bad. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Then something possessed me to go up to the garage. I was gonna open the garage door so I could just drive the Drango in real quick. And uh, that's when it hit. I mean, it just hit all at once. I think that was the part, it was a tornado. I think it was a pretty direct hit too. And uh, it's like Aunt Di's house and garage made it. My garage is fine. It's still not letting up though. This is just crazy. Oh, look at all this. So this is the branch that landed on me. I was in the middle of the steps or somewhere around there when these all fell. And uh, uh, that big branch there is the one that missed me by about eight feet. I was at the very, at the garage getting ready to go in the door. Probably had my hand on the doorknob when it hit. And I turned around and started running and I got to here when this branch and everything fell. Hey everybody, I'm here at the homestead and as you can see behind me, we've got quite a mess. Giant tree limbs down, uh, thousands of trees around the area are just gone. Uh, it came in and just topped all the trees in my yard. Um, straight line winds or a tornado, honestly, it felt like a tornado. I was standing right here when it hit and I didn't even have time to make it to the front door. So that's how fast it happened. And uh, luckily I was okay. Um, branch came down on me, but it was small, thank goodness. And uh, I did make it in the house for the remainder of it. And I'll be posting the video clips that I do have. Uh, made it back to the cabin, and the cabin is uh, still in one piece, but it is sitting about eight feet from where it used to. And let's just say it's not level anymore. So I'll be posting videos periodically. Um, this is gonna take a lot of work and a lot of effort, but uh, uh, been checking on the neighbors. Everybody seems to be okay. We'll talk soon. All right, everyone. Since I've been able to get a four-wheeler path cleared back here to the cabin, now I am going to start clearing trees uh, around the general vicinity of the cabin. I have a game plan. I'm going to jack the corner of the cabin up that's in the dirt, and I'm going to put blocks under it, and I'm going to level the cabin right where it's at. And then I'll go from there as far as making a decision where I'm going to put the permanent foundation for the cabin and, uh, and how exactly I'm going to go about moving it. My plan for now is to just get this area sort of cleaned up and get the cabin jacked up to where it's level. That way I can assess the damage uh, on the floorboards. There are some damage in the floor of the cabin. I don't know how bad that's going to be. It's actually something that needed to be addressed anyway. So, um, with everything, there's a silver lining. Got a new wheeler for in the bush. And this is a 2016 Honda Rancher. And uh, gonna it just kind of fell into a good deal on this. A very good deal. So, uh, going to be using this to 
aid here on the homestead. A good four wheeler is something that you really need if you're gonna if you're gonna do the homestead thing. So here's how the cabin was blown off of its foundation by the tornado slash derecho or whatever it was. We got really lucky. I'm gonna cut this tree down today. I'm gonna cut this limb down today, hopefully. I was debating on cutting that tree down, but the uh, tornado derecho did it for me. So yeah, uh, lucky nothing hit the roof. It's funny it didn't blow my stovepipe off. All it did was blow it crooked. It's just crazy that all that wind, 100, 100 plus mile an hour winds, 120 mile an hour winds, blew the whole cabin off its foundation, but didn't blow the stovepipe off. It's only secured by like two little screws. But pack up all these boards, clear this area. That's what the cabin was sitting on. I just had it leveled on, on cement blocks. It was not fastened down. We never thought we'd have to fasten it down. Lesson learned. Here's what's going on on the inside of the cabin. I'll show you that. Everything's just kind of a, a mess. But I've been in here and took all the little stuff. TV stayed up. Smoke alarm stayed up. <laughs> but anyway, destroyed my, my brand new microwave. But hopefully my air conditioner still works and my fridge still works. But we'll find out. Anyway, we'll get this thing situated. Well, I've been cutting trees. I got this one down, cutting that one up. And uh, now I'm going to try to jack up the corner of the cabin. Wish me luck. It's jacking her right up. She's wanting to shift a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is put something over here to catch it. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna build some blocks up and get a better bite closer to the corner. This is awesome. The man at work, push man. It's going. Hard at work. We're getting rid of his shade today. There she goes. Boom, and it's down.
well. All is well that ends well. This is one of the few stories sometimes in modern day life that has a happy ending. The, uh, the cabin is on skids. It's safe and sound. And now I can begin really working on it because it's on its permanent foundation. I can hook onto it with the tractor if I want to move it. Everything is good to go. Uh, this is one of those deals where uh, I came back even stronger and better after the, um, the storm. So uh, my trails are now blazed again and uh, the treetops are removed from my trails and I have even more trails than I did before. I did so much work just getting the roadway cleared back to the cabin and getting my trails cleared that I thought I would try this brewski. This is an athletic light. 25 calories, 5 grams of carbs. You didn't think I was going to do an episode without a step two, did you? Oh, this is absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, hey, that's really, really good. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Anyway, the lesson to this story is sometimes we have our life planned out, maybe even a year or two in advance or even more. And in this case, I had my summer planned out. I knew what I was going to do, what month and everything. And then a storm hits. You never know in this world when a storm's going to hit. But just remember that things don't always go as planned. Sometimes you have to regroup, replan, you have to work through the obstacles and you'll always come back stronger in the end. So thanks everybody. I'd like to personally thank everybody who reached out and offered their help. I'd like to give a big shout out to my cousin Josh for moving the cabin for me with his skid loader. So a uh, lot of thank yous to a lot of people for reaching out to help after the storm. But all's well and ends well. The timber and a lot of the land around here is definitely changed and marked by the storm. We lost a lot of good trees, but they will grow back and life continues on. So whenever there's a storm in your life, just know that you'll come back better and stronger. That's kind of been the theme of my 2023. I'll see you all next time in the bush.